Hello, my beautiful humans. It's Adria, Adria Firestone, speaker, author, coach. And I have something, as usual, that has illuminated my own mind that I can't wait to share with you. Well, many times in our lives, those of us who have gone through a lot find ourselves in the position of sleeping beauty. We're lying there, we are unconscious, we are in our own world of, oh, woe is me. We've been there. Oh boy, I've been there. And then along comes a prince and kisses you and you wake up and you go, baby, this is fabulous. Oh my goodness, I'm awake. This is wonderful. I'm alive. I thought I was gone. And then after the first few months, you realize that this prince was maybe only in it for his own delight because of whatever his trauma is doesn't allow him to have an emotional connection. He's only concerned with his own pleasure. And here's something that I didn't understand before. That if we discover that the prince is a frog, it's no big deal. It's just, you know something? I don't like that shade of green. Baby, shoo, out. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. But we've been taught differently by society. If a prince comes along and kisses you, you are supposed to think, well, this is a prince. This is so fabulous. I'm sticking this out no matter what goes on. I've done that in my life. Oh, I have gone through it and say, you, you've committed to this. Don't back out now. You need to stay there. No, you don't. When you discover that the prince is a frog, What you do is you go to your frog chart. <laughs> you mean you don't have a frog chart? <laughs> I do. <laughs> and you say, well, I did it. I kissed another frog. But here's the thing. And now I say this with all the love in my heart. No matter what your interaction is with someone, That frog that seemed like a prince at that moment, he was a prince. He was a prince because he came along and kissed you and awakened you. And the way to remember this is not with derision. Yes, I know I was laughing in the beginning because it's funny, because we're so vulnerable, we're so human, we're so beautifully, oh, our arms held out like beautiful little children saying, please love me, love me, love me. But there's no shame in that. And there's no shame in thinking that a frog was a prince. Because like I say to you at that moment, that frog was your prince. At that moment, you had been asleep for years. And he deigned to kiss you. It doesn't matter what his motivation was. It doesn't matter whether he was thinking, oh, baby, this will be so wonderful for me. I don't really care about this person that's sleeping here. That doesn't matter.
because our experiences, our gifts for us, our lessons for us to take in and learn from them. With humor, of course with humor, and sometimes with back of the hand to the forehead, yes. Sometimes wailing and screaming and gnashing your teeth, yes. That's all okay. But the most important thing is what that person was to you in that moment, because that moment will never happen again. And that person shared a spark, Prometheus, the Promethean fire, and awakened you to your own passion again. So darlings, <laughs> don't be afraid to kiss frogs. Some of them make the cutest noises. But when you realize that that person is no longer appropriate, that's the key now, that that person is no longer appropriate for who you are, for who you are, your awakened self is right now, that that person just doesn't match that at all. That's okay. Then open those beautiful hands and let go. Let go. With laughter, with love, and saying to yourself, thank you. Thank you. I am so grateful for the moments we shared. I am so grateful that I have awakened. Let that sink in. One, when something doesn't work anymore when it no longer fuels your heart, your mind, your spirit, your body, when it no longer fuels that, open your hands and let go. A piece of paper with signatures or a spiritu sanctu does not a living, vibrant relationship make. It is the two people intertwining in this beautiful infinity with each other. That creates a relationship. What society says about relationship has nothing to do with the reality of relationship between people. Marriage was invented, I don't know, back in the 15th century or maybe earlier than that, because it was only fair that children and women were treated like chattel and that there was some protection in actually marrying someone. For heaven's sakes, don't marry for protection. We're not in the 15th century anymore, even though puritanical America often acts like that. I have abided by rules that didn't feel right to me anymore. All of us have. So have the courage to listen to the language of your heart, to the needs of your soul. What is your soul and heart asking for? Feel that. Listen to that. Appreciate that. And even if the prince has turned into a frog, it isn't that he turned into a frog. It's that your perception has changed because you've grown. And now you're not sleeping beauty anymore. You're a beauty who's 100% awake. 
And that, my dear, is a very different animal, isn't it? All right. Basta. That's it. <laughs> Take that with um, laughter. Take it with all your heart, because you know that I'm telling you the truth. I don't tell you anything that I have not experienced, that I have not gone through, that I haven't witnessed, passed through with my clients or with myself. Because my life has been a very intense one. It feels like it's been three lifetimes in one. And I want to know who the smart so-and-so who decided that that was appropriate to do that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, my soul said, oh, yeah, let's do it all at once and let's just get it over with. Oh, this smarty pants wasn't so smart. Boy, oh, boy, did I give myself a challenge. But I wish you to rise in every challenge. And when we fall down, that's part of the lesson. It's part of the lesson. Oh, man, I've fallen down so many times. And somehow, we always get up again. And sometimes the harder I am brought to my knees, the higher I rise when I finally have the courage and the humility to get up again. Darlings, listen to your heart. Listen to your soul. You have wisdom inside of you that is connected to the divine itself. That is not societal convention. That is your authentic being talking to you. Listen to that. Let that be your guide when it's time to open your hands and let go. Do so with gratitude and with a blessing because the moment for that interaction is over. Okay, I will definitely see you later, alligator.